In this polarizing era of the NASCAR playoffs, Kevin Harvick has experienced both highs and lows. The highest being in 2014, of course, when he took home his first ever Cup Series championship. This was in the first season of the win in your in format, and some people forget that Kevin Harvick actually had his back up against the wall in the round of eight. He needed to win at Phoenix to advance to the championship four, and that he did. In a way, this is exactly what NASCAR wanted. Kevin Harvick transitioned from being just a really good driver to now considered a champion. Kevin Harvick would go on to make the championship four in four of the next five seasons. The most dominant seasons came in 2018 when he notched eight victories in total but finished third in the final race. But that would not compare to his 2020 season. A season in which we all saw Kevin Harvick dominate but in the end get sacrificed. This is sacrificed for the system. This video is sponsored by Rex MD, your one-stop shop for all your men's health needs. Listen guys, I'm not gonna judge here. I get it, it happens. But let's be honest here. Should Viagra really cost $90? I don't think so. RexMD.com has FDA approved generic Viagra starting at just $2 per tablet and delivered discreetly to your door. Simply fill out a brief survey and if appropriate, you can try a starter pack of generic Viagra. RexMD.com has helped over 100,000 men get whatever type of health care they need, whether it's primary care, daily health, sexual health, or hair loss. If you're in the need, starter packs of generic Viagra are now available for our viewers, but you gotta go to rexmd.com forward slash bfm to get started. There's no copay or doctor's visits, and your shipping is always free. A huge thanks to the fine folks over at RexMD and you for supporting this channel. Entering the 2020 season, Kevin Harvick was one of the definite championship favorites. He was coming off of his recent championship four appearance in 2019, which saw him notch four wins the entire season. As for the start of 2020, it was looking like business as usual. The first four races demonstrated his dominance immediately. He didn't win any of them, but he was definitely in contention. Good enough to take the regular season points lead right out the gate. But unfortunately for all of us, life would take a drastic turn. Phoenix would be the last race for a little while as the pandemic pretty much shut down everything. But once the season resumed, the four team quickly realized they were on to something special. In search of their fifth championship four appearance, and Kevin Harvick's best season ever. Back straight away, final time. Kevin Harvick is about to become the 14th driver in NASCAR Cup history to reach 50 career victories, breaking a tie with Tony Stewart for 14th. Harvick wins NASCAR's return to action at Darlington. We'll light that candles on Rodney Childers' birthday cake because Kevin Harvick wins Atlanta. Great hit up and what? I don't know what you guys did to this thing at the end, but great job. Kevin Harvick right now is still paying tribute and, and waving to the fans in his own yep. way and paying tribute to Dale Earnhardt. I have a feeling every time he wins here, Mike, this is going to be something we're going to see out of Kevin Harvick. Harvick did break the draft going down Long Pond straight away. Hamlin unable to gain ground in the short shoot. For the final time. And on to the front straightaway. Kevin Harvick at Pocono Kevin finally is a winner. Good job. Way to do the strategy. What a, what a, what a turnaround. Great job, guys. Awesome. Thank you. Harvick, Denny Hamlin, they've been the dominant two cars all of 2020. Hamlin crashes out as they were battling for the lead. Now Harvick trying to go back to back at the most fam famous racetrack in the world. Coming out of turn four, Kevin Harvick is going to see the checkered flag. He wins again at the Brickyard. It's Brickyard 400. Awesome job. He won a week ago at New Hampshire. His third win of the season. Now 
now doing everything he can to catch up to the four of Harvick. Harvick has been dominant two of the last three races. He's going to make it three out of four. Harvick's going to win again at Michigan. And that'll do it. Good job, boys. Thank you. What a car. And right now, Kevin Harvick looking to sweep the weekend. Denny Hamlin's going to have some momentum on the high side. Will it be enough as they come out of four the final time? Kevin Harvick is going to sweep Michigan. He wins again. The final time. Harvick out front. Truex running second. Jimmy Johnson trying to hold on to third after pit strategy. Just a two-tire stop. Put him up front. Kevin go, Harvick is going to win. He sweeps. The regular season was simply a dream season. In total, seven wins and the regular season title. They've had potential championship seasons in the past, but not of this level. This is a 1990s Jeff Gordon type season. Also throw in the fact that Hamlin is on a similar season himself, and you have one of the most dominant slash competitive playoff seasons in NASCAR history. Harvick wasted no time at all in the first round. He opened up the playoffs with another win at Darlington and closed out the first round with the win at Bristol, beating the one and only KFB in the final lap. And just like that, one round into the playoffs, Kevin Harvick already has nine wins. Without a doubt, after round one, Harvick is the odds-on championship four favorite. But the round of 12 saw some inconsistency with only one top 10 finish, but they had so many points accumulated from the regular season that they advanced anyway. But as we all know, the round of eight marked the beginning of the end. After leading 85 laps, the final laps at Kansas saw Logano beat Harvick off pit road. For the rest of the race, Harvick desperately tried to get by Logano, but unfortunately with this package, it's all about track position here. If you were watching the race that day, it was absolutely frustrating knowing Harvick couldn't get by him. Harvick stays up high, also lap traffic in front of him. Through three and four for the final time. Joey Logano is going to win again in 2020, this time Kansas. secured the championship four again. Logano's win advances him to the championship four, but certainly no time to panic over on the four team. It was a frustrating finish for sure, but in the end, you still bagged some second place points as well as some stage points, and now sit 41 points above the cut line. The next race is Texas, where the team has demonstrated their dominance plenty of times, but unfortunately, Mother Nature would have other plans. Denny was running fourth when he went up the racetrack, lost a lot of positions. Now, a big run by Alex oh, Bowman, oh. and Harvick's into the wall. Harvick tags the outside hey, hold wall. Hold your line, hold your line, hold your line. Hold your line, hold your line, fight of a Harvick trying to keep it at speed. Two favorites all season, Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, both having issues in the same part of the kill. racetrack. He's gonna have to pit right here. Yeah, huge contact for the four Jeff. The right side flat, the Goodyear lettering miss, missing off both right side tires. He, he. Right side flat. Harvick complained about the wet conditions immediately, and the rest of the field followed suit, but the damage had been done. In a race that wouldn't end until freaking Wednesday, Kevin Harvick ended up with a 16th place finish. Even though they came out of Texas empty-handed, they still had a sizable lead, leading all drivers without a win 42 points above the cut line. The problem, however, is the cutoff race is at Martinsville, and we all know how both Chase Elliott and Martin Truex Jr. performed there. Harvick knew this was his chance. This is his chance for a championship. He's got such a great season that is on the line right here, right now in this race. If he can't get below or he can't get above the cut line, his championship hopes go away. All those nine wins were great to celebrate at the time, but they don't mean anything if he can't get out of this race and get into the championship four. The other problem is Harvick's team decided to lay an egg and not show up at all. This was unbelievable to watch unfold. Are we really about to witness a nine win season slip into irrelevancy? They eventually do get the car better, unfortunately not by much, and are now running just outside the top 10. There was an interesting conversation on channel two that Kevin Harvick does 
was not here between veteran spotter Tim Fidewa and Rodney Childers. He said, we're one out. Do you want to tell him? And Rodney said, no, let him race right now. So they're going to let Kevin Harvick race. I'm sure Harvick knows the situation. He knows every pass is critical, and he might know that this one will put him back in a tie with Keselowski and back in the championship four. What do you think about that? I think Kevin Harvick, the driver he is, and the, and he, I'd give you all that information. I don't know how you don't tell him something so critical, but. Yeah, I'm with you, Dale. I mean, obviously, Rodney and Kevin have a great relationship, and they have success, so we have to trust what Rodney's doing. But I know if it was you and I, I would tell you. I would want you to know. I know you're doing all you can, but give you every bit of information I have. The closing laps have gotten extremely intense. At this point, Chase Elliott is a lock to advance to the championship four. Kevin Harvick needs to pass two cars in five laps. Once he gets by Matty D, he has his sights set on KFB. You can view what happens next in two ways, either as pure entertainment or a complete embarrassment. Chase Elliott through three and four. He is going to win his way into the championship four. Elliott wins at Martinsville. Ah! Can Harvick do it? The final turn. Go get it. He needs the position. Oh, Harvick spins the 18. Turns into the 18. He turns as well. The 18 crosses the start finish line, and Harvick is going to be out of the playoffs. The question was asked earlier, what would you do? What would you do to make it into the championship four? I tried to run into the door of the 18 as a latch just just effort there and spun him out. So sorry to uh, put him in the middle of uh, trying to gain a point. But um, you know, look, these aren't these championships aren't like winning like Petty and Earnhardt used to win them. You have to uh, you know put them together three weeks at a time. And, you know, it comes down to, to one race, and it came down to one race for us tonight and came up short. So, yeah, after a season in which we saw Kevin Harvick post nine wins, 20 top fives, 27 top tens, and an average finish of 7.3, he completely misses the championship four after horrid performances in really two of the last three races. The reaction to this was crazy. It once again split the fan base right down the middle. One of the most dominant seasons in NASCAR history gets followed up with 90 even having a shot at the championship? I think I know what happened. He didn't rub the Buddha belly. That's exactly what happened. I told him to. But in all seriousness, this is the type of chaos NASCAR wants. You can definitely expose the system by winning zero races and the championship. But if you have an extremely dominant performance, sometimes for the sake of entertainment, you're going to get sacrificed for the system. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.